Hello, it's 9 p.m. in RTD. It's time to English New Edition. For tonight's headlines, uh, we have... <laughs> the head of state received the new IGAD the Executive Secretary. For the international scene, UNICEF launched an emergency appeal for humanitarian actions for children in 2020. Welcome to our newsroom. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Ismail Omar Gelle, received this morning in the middle of the mornings at the Presidential Palace, the Executive Secretary of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, Workne Gebeyu cooperation between the Republic of Djibouti and the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, was uh, discussed at length uh, during this meeting. The discussion is then focused on regional in economic integration, hence uh, the programs uh, in the economic and social files. The Executive Secretary emphasized in his intervention is the main objective of uh, IGAD, which is the to achieve a sustainable economic development for member states and to do so we need IFO that is uh, will focus on economic cooperation and uh, regional integration's long-term priority with a view to promoting collective self-sufficiency and integrating economic development. In addition, the head of state congratulates him on his appointment as uh, IGAD's executive secretary. Finally, it should be noted that the secretary general of the presidency attended the meeting. The Executive Secretary of uh, IGAD, uh, Workne Gebe, you express in the National Press uh, Micro. Listen to him, please. About the wisdom of His Excellency the President, uh, the way how we are going to, to navigate upon this uh, big responsibilities the region has given for us. Uh, IGAD and Djibouti are inseparably connected because Djibouti is hosting IGAD and, and we are working very closely. Uh, so. This relationship and the experience His Excellency President have and the direction they given for me, for, for me, it's very important and really we did a very good discussion and, and uh, I got what I want from Excellency the President. IGAD is a regional organization mostly working upon peace and security. Peace and security, of course, one of very important areas that we will work. And also, the other very important thing is the issue of integration, one of the areas that IGAD has created from from very beginning. So this integration includes economic integration, social integration, making boundaries of IGAD member sets very uh, productive. Djibouti launches its uh, official campaign for non-permanent members of the United Nations Security Council in New York. Listen to Dini Musa. The Republic of Djibouti has announced in New York that it is starting its official campaign for election as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. In June 2020, the 74th season of the United Nations General Assembly will have to elect five of the ten non-permanent members of the Security Council for the period 2021-2022. One of these five seats is centrally allocated to Africa, and according to the tradition of regional rotation adopted by the African Union, it is now East Africa's turn to apply. The Republic of Djibouti announced its intentions, determination, and the quality of its candidacy at the end of 2016. The country has been originally involved in the crucial issue of conflict resolution and peace building since its independence. Located in the Horn of Africa, a complex of strategic region, Djibouti had been able to implement a policy of openness and broad international cooperation. As demonstrated by the number of major friendly powers that have economic or material infrastructure, on its territory. The Republic of Djibouti is also actively engaged in combating terrorism and safeguarding maritime trade in the strategic Bab el Mandeb Strait. Strongly involved in the fight against piracy and the protection of refugees, Djibouti also hosts a number of support structures as on its territory, besides participating in numerous peacekeeping missions under the UN flag. The country has been deeply involved in the dialogue and peace process in Somalia since the early 90s, with the deployment of troops within the AMSOM African Union mission in Somalia. The Republic of Djibouti embodies a unique paltry form for the dialogue mediation, trade and peaceful conflict resolution. Through its candidacy, 
the country intends to bring its experience, commitment, and African perspective on world affairs to the Security Council. This candidacy also embodies the need to take into account the contribution of small states to the decision that will shape the future of the planet. In particular, with regard to the issues of climate change, Djibouti's campaign enjoys the support of the organizations of, for Islamic corporations, the international organization of the La Francofi and the Arab League. However, Djibouti firmly deplores and challenges the process within the African Union, which led to Kenya's competitive nomination. This process took place in flagrant violation of the organization's rules and traditions. This text is specified that in the event of multiple nomination or lack of conscience, states are ranked according to two principles, previous rotation and frequency. In both cases, Djibouti's candidacy should have been successful. Djibouti last served on the Security Council in 93-94 and Kenya in 97-98. In addition, Djibouti has served only one term in the entire history, 93-94, and Kenya two terms, 77-78 and 97-98. Djibouti reiterates its unconditional commitment to African unity and to political and diplomatic cooperation among the nations of the continent. However, the democratically adopted rules between the states of the African Union must apply to all. For this reason, the country considers its candidacy to be legitimate and that of a united Africa. It therefore intends to defend and promote it until the vote in the United Nations General Assembly in June 2020. Following the recent heavy rains that have uh, fallen on our country and caused considerable um, damage, the Minister of Interior, uh, Mumin Ahmed Sheikh, has uh, today in his office officially launched the document addressing the damages caused by these storms. Uh, this assessment was uh, carried out jointly by representatives of the relevant ministries, UK, UN uh, agencies and non-governmental organizations under the leadership of the Executive Secretary for Risk and uh, Disasters Management. The resident coordinators of the United Nations system was present on this occasion. United Nations um, Myers of City of Djibouti, the director of the multilateral relations, uh, the executive secretary for Risk and Disaster Management, the secretary general of the Ministry of Social Affairs, uh, Solidarity, and the executive secretary of ONAHSA. For her part, the resident coordinators of the United Nations system, Barbara Manzi, has uh, indicated that we all gather here to help us uh, more in the difficult times when the heavy rains and some of the population is in need, she said. An official ceremony to receive uh, humanitarian aid took place uh, early this morning at Onarsa. This uh, precious aid is intended to relieve uh, the victims of the latest uh, torrential rains that have uh, fallen on the national territory. The Executive uh, Secretary for Risk and Disaster Management, Mohamed Ahmed Madar, received assistance uh, from the French government uh, represented by this aid consists of hygiene kits, uh, water purificators, uh, tablet and medicines. The ceremony was attended by the Executive Secretary of ONAHSA, the Secretary General of the Minister of Social Affairs, Solidarity, the Director of the Multilateral Relations, the Ambassador of the European Union in Djibouti, and the Coordinator of the United Nations System. In his speech, uh, the Ambassador of France uh, to Djibouti, Arnaud Guillois, pointed out uh, that the emphasis was uh, on bilateral cooperation uh, between uh, the two countries. Uh, the president of the independent cut importing union, Siki, Mr. Hussein Ahmed Farah, and the deputy of the president of the cut uh, importing trade union have got granted the uh, significant assistance to the victims of the recent food uh, flus. Uh, the amount of this aid was uh, not dis dis in accordance uh, with the Islamic law, but was paid this morning into the account uh, opened uh, for this purpose. The two trade union representatives who addressed the press this morning indicate that their actions were part of the solidarity with their fellow citizens. Uh,
On November 21, several storms uh, struck on our country, causing enormous damage. The national police responded appropriately and enthusiastically to help the population. Listen to the report. Causing enormous damage, the rains did not spare any part of the city, and the population in the city center was faced with a lack of buses. The police officers responding to the firm well of the Director General of the National Police, Colonel Abdullah Abdifara have therefore set up several assembly points to help and guide the population by allowing them to get into the various trucks made available to them. The main task for the element of the National Police was to ensure order in this crowd movement. For more than five days, the police ensured that people who were trapped in the city could quietly board the various trucks of the Security Defense Forces at Mahmoud Harbi Square and the various assembly points throughout the city and on the edge of the capital. Faced with the state of emergency caused by the tornado rains, President Ismail Omar Ghali decided to launch the ORSK plan, which is the Civil Security Response Organization. All national actors and international organizations were involved. It is in a spirit of national solidarity and with a strong sense of patriotism that men and women of the National Police participated in this plan from the very first hours of its development. A crisis unit had been set up the, at the prefecture and a toll-free number on 1516 had been set up. Several police officers were in the forefront to respond and reassure people affected by the floods with each call. The police officers take the name, telephone number, address, and above all, that they note the problems faced by the victims. Armed with this information, the police then redirect the victims to the various institutions responsible for rescuing the victims. After the installation operations in the various schools and community development centers, police officers were deployed to these centers where the population had found them to ensure the smooth running of the supply operations, but also to ensure security while providing assistance and security to the vulnerable people. The police officers were on duty 24-7 to provide valuable assistance to those people who had fled their homes followed by the torrential rains. In addition, the police officers were as close as possible to our fellow citizens who were injured during the rains. Several operations to assist the wounded were carried out in the neighborhoods. The elements of the traffic police played an important role during the bad weather that affected our country. From the very first hours, they were able to secure the roads, redirect drivers, but above all, ensure the flow of traffic on major roads. Faced with the rise of the Wadi flood, the safety zones had been installed on several traffic roads. The intersection of the Venice Road and the Durali Road and the crosswords of the Durali Road had been closed to traffic due to the Ambuli Wadi. Traffic police officers were on site 24 hours a day. The Ambuli Bridge, which had become the main road to the city center, has been closed for heavy trucks. Following the distribution of the various actions areas, the National Police were in charge of Zone 3, which includes the districts most affected by the bad weather. These are District 5, District 6, District 7, District 7B, and Umbuli. Hundreds of homes were severely flooded and highly affected people populations were unable to empty their homes of stringent water. More than 800 men and women were mobilized. The Director General of National Police, Colonel Abdullah Abdifara, on a working mission during the bad weather. The Acting Director General, Colonel Abdurrahman Ali, had been interested with ensuring this important rescue mission for our fellow nationals. They used wheelbarrows, shovels, pick axes, and rakes to get into the various districts of the city. House by house, sector by sector, the police have spared no effort to help the people. They emptied, cleaned, and cleared the houses and alleys of each neighborhood entrusted to them. The population wished to thank the brave men and women of national police. They drive through the neighbors of the area. They were served to enable our countrymen to return to their home. Stingy water in the houses were emptied, swears were unclosed, and garbage left by wa wastewater was cleaned. All these acts carried out in the different districts have shown that the National Police, before all else, remains a police force at the service of our population. The Director General of the National Police, Colonel Abdullah Abdifar, once again confirms to the population the unfailing dedication of men and women who form the ranks of, na of the National Police. Also at the People's Palace, on the sidelines of this conference for a prosperous Africa, this uh, three-round day had uh, on the agenda a meeting between the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and the Industry Passy and the African Chamber of Commerce in Japan, a meeting to address a crucial team made by the African private sector is a vector growth while rethinking relations with the partners, including the African Chamber of Commerce of Japan, this economic meeting was an opportunity for all participants to acquire f more knowledge about the common market that is uh, the free trade area, but also for economic operators to be prepared. It was a question of working in synergy in, in order to move toward the ideals of the common market uh, to exchange expertise and know how engaging together at a sustained pace. Uh, 
the president of the Chamber of Commerce and president of the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce, Yusuf Musa Dawale, called for the African Chamber of Commerce to be the spearhead of, for optimizing uh, the process of developing uh, non-trade through this common market. The director of the Africa Bureau on the Ministries of Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan, Mr. Uh, Hachino Yoshikadu detailed in one sentence projections uh, the recommendations uh, of TCAD 7, advancing Africa development through the use of people, technology and innovations, and finally to materialize this common desire to work toward the same ideals. So a memorandum of understanding was signed between the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce of Japan. In his uh, intervention, the ambassador of uh, Djibouti to Japan, Mr. Ahmed, Ali, uh, Ahmed Araita Ali, has indicated this economic meeting was an opportunity for all participants uh, to acquire more knowledge about the common market that is the free trade area, but also for economic operators to be prepared. It was a question of working, of, uh, question of, of working in synergy in order to move toward the ideas of common market to exchange its expertise and know how engaging together at a sustained pace. Graduation ceremony for some 200 gendarmes was held at Sheikh Musa Training Center, co-chaired by Colonel Zakaria Hassan Aden, the Chief of Staff of the National Gendarmerie, and the General Corpus Giovanni Nistri, commanders of the General of the Italian Carabinieri Army. This ceremony marked uh, the end of a wide range of uh, training sessions uh, given by Carabinieri instructions. Uh, the various training courses uh, began in mid-September 2019, focused on the preparations of a four-mid police unit, also called uh, FPU, and law in enforcement, uh, environmental in investigation, cultural heritage investigations, uh, organized uh, crime investigations, investigative techniques, and technical policy. Uh, ceremony began with a review of the troops and by Colonel uh, Zakaria Hassan Adams and the General Commander uh, Nist Nistri Giovanni Italian Carabinieri Army. Bye. 
At the end of the taking up of armies, a visit of international school for the improvement of judicial police practice was made to the high delegations of the carabinier weapons from the outset. The commander general of the carabinier weapon followed with interest the presentations of the school made to him by his commander and chair his very positive impressions, impressions of uh, the strength and of the types of uh, entities for the entire African continent. Uh, during the visit, uh, General Giovanni Nistri met and discussed with uh, the trainees from the first uh, classes of the Criminal Identification Technicians Internship uh, from several countries on the African uh, continent during the visit particular emphasis was placed on the presentations of scientific laboratory equipment that allows uh, the use of evidence collected uh, in the file of by investigators after the, after the visit the military authorities exchanges gifts and uh, closed activity with the traditional family follow In his speech on the occasion, General Giovanni Nistri, commander of the Carabinieri, Italian Carabinieri Army, first thanked Colonel Zakaria Hassan Adam for the warm welcome and invitations to this graduation ceremony. He then stressed the importance of the various training courses given by the Carabinieri instructors at the request of the National Gendarmerie which is in fuel evolution. This is, he said, reflects the excellent partnership uh, between the two sister institutions. Uh, for his part, Colonel Zakaria Hassan, the Chief of Staff of the National Gendarmerie, also mentioned the perfect cooperation between the Djibouti National Gendarmerie and the Italian Carabinieri Army. The Chief of Staff of the National Gendarmerie, who made the trainings of the staff as a priority, explained that due to the increase in the missions of the Army, due to the creations of new units, these specialized training courses perfectly met the new requirements uh, and, and the enabled to maintain the capacity of the gendarmes, Colonel Zakaria Hassan Aden, also thanked uh, his counterpart for having responded to the invitation to speed this uh, agenda before salvaging the carabinieri and gendarmes instructors for their abnegation and congratulating the trainees for their results. We regret to announce the death uh, of uh, national artist Murad Mohammed Hosha. He made uh, his debut on uh, music and scenes in 2004 in the group of uh, Four March. The, he leaves behind him 
a widow and three children. The Director General of RTD and all RTD staffs extend their sincere condolences to the families of the victims. Uh, for the international scene, uh, UNICEF uh, today launches its emergency appeal for 2020 for USA. It's more detail with Dini Musa. Around the world. This is an all time high representing 3.5 times the amount requested in 2010. UNICEF Humanitarian Action for Children report details the organization's appeal for 2020 and its actions to provide children affected by conflict and disaster with access to water sanitation, nutrition, education, health, and protection services. In total, the appeal concerns emergency assistance for 95 million people, including adults. The five largest appeals concern Syrian refugees and host communities in Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, and Turkey. Altogether, $864 million. Yemen, $535 million. Syria, $294 million. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, $262 million. And Southern Sudan, with $180 million. This is it uh, for the news. Thanks for watching us.